Copywriting just means writing for persuasion, right? In other words, you're writing things that are with the intention of getting somebody to do something, right? Of persuading somebody to do something. And that could be to click on an ad. It could be to buy a product. It could be to book a sales call. It could be any number of things. But if you're writing for the sake of persuading somebody, is a little different than writing for like academically. And last week we went over, um, oh, it, just about everything is copywriting, by the way. Like if you're writing sales pages, if you're writing video scripts, like if you're writing a, a YouTube ad, you want to write out what you're going to say in the ad or write out what the spokesman is going to say in the ad, that's copywriting. If you're writing a book that's intended to sell things, that's copywriting. If you're writing little, even like little Twitter posts that are short little things that are two or three lines. If the intent is to get somebody to follow your page or to download your lead magnet or to click a link or whatever it is, that's all copywriting. So you can see how having this skill is extremely valuable for a wide variety of different purposes. So last week we talked about copywriting principle number one, which is easy to easy easy to understand right you want your your copy what you write to be easy to understand because if it takes too much mental energy then people are just going to check out and they're not even going to finish reading in the first place so the easier and more dumbed down it is the better even if your audience are highly intelligent people right because even highly intelligent people don't like to waste their mental energy if they think that it's not worth it so the more easy it is, like the less mental energy it takes, the more likely people are to read it. So we went in detail on that last week, but this week what we're going to get into is principle number two. And these are no particular order, by the way. These are just important foundations to copywriting. So principle number two is evokes emotion. We want Whenever we write copy, whenever we write a, a pitch, whenever we write a sales page, an ad, a Twitter post, whatever, we want to create some sort of emotion in the person who is reading it. And that should be an emotion that drives them to do the thing that you want them to do. Whether, again, that's to click on the ad, to fill out your form, to buy your product, whatever it is. Now... If you think about it, all of us do everything like it, whenever we make any decision, whether it's a buying decision or or what we're going to eat for lunch or any decision we make in our life, we make for one reason and one reason only. And that is that we feel like it. Right. We feel that this is the a decision that is going to make us feel better. If you think about the, like the last things that you've bought. Um, and, and, you know, emotion or feeling can be physical feeling or emotional feeling. So if you go in and eat because you're hungry, right, you eat because you believe the eating is going to make your hunger go away. It's going to make you feel satisfied. And then if you, let's say you buy a new car, well, chances are you buy a new, let's say you buy a new car and you don't actually need a new car, right? You can just buy a new car because it's nicer than the one you have. Well, why do you do that? Well, probably because it makes you feel more successful or maybe it's fast and you like the feeling of driving fast. Maybe you like the feeling of other people seeing you in this car. Maybe it makes you feel good when you see how nice and new and shiny it is, right? Whatever your reason is, it always comes down to feeling. So if you want to be able to persuade somebody to do something, then you have to appeal to their feelings. So, um, and by the way, that doesn't mean that logic is not important. A lot of people think of themselves as like, oh, I'm a logical person as opposed to an emotional person. But the truth is we're all some of both. And even the most logical person still makes all their decisions because of emotion, right? They just logically justify that the thing that they're doing will in fact create that emotion. So 
and the logic part comes after the emotional part, essentially. So we want something. Let's say we see a sales pitch that says that if you, you know, if you buy this course, you're going to make a million dollars. Well, we, emotionally, we want that million dollars. Why? Because it's going to make us feel good. We feel like a success. We can buy stuff that's going to make us feel good. We can buy a new house that's going to make us feel good. We can help poor children in Haiti because it makes us feel good. Which, by the way, even charity, we do because of how it feels, right? We, we feel good when we're helping somebody. Which a lot of people think of that in a cynical way, but I don't I don't see it that way at all. I think that's a, a beautiful part of the way that God created us, that God created us to feel good when we're helping somebody else. I think that's a wonderful thing. But anyway, so we we want the thing because of how we think it's going to make us feel. And then we logically justify it. So somebody, for example, let's say somebody sends me an email that says that they're the prince of Nigeria, and if I send them a thousand dollars, then they're going to send me ten million dollars. Well, ten million dollars sounds great. I would feel really good if I got ten million dollars, but then I have to logically look at it and say, okay, am I really going to get that ten million dollars, or is the person just scamming me? And so my logical brain is going to say, okay, obviously that's a scam. Um, but you see how the, the emotion comes first. Like, I want the thing, is, and then it goes to the logic side. Is it realistic? Like, am I actually going to get it? So logic is important, and I think I will go more into that in the next lesson. But for, for this one, we're going to go into emotion specifically. So, um, and good copywriting, by the way, has to address both. Right. It has to create the desire, which comes from emotion, and then it has to logically justify why taking this action will get them that thing that they desire. Right. Will get them the good feeling thing. So. Emotions to consider when you are copywriting there. Well, there's two basic they're basic categories. There is what I call towards emotions versus away from emotions. So human beings, our, our programming is that we want to move towards pleasure and away from pain. So there are things that drive us towards something. Like if I desire to have a million dollars, it's it, it, well, it could be towards or away from, right? I might desire to have a million dollars so that I can buy this thing and I'm going to feel really good. It could be so that I can help these people and I'm going to feel good, right? But it could also be away from. It's like, well, I'm in debt and I want to get out of debt. It doesn't feel good. I'm moving away from the debt. It could be that people look down on me because I feel like a loser. I want to move away from that feeling of being a loser and people looking down on me. So we have both. And so I want to, I want to go over... Uh, oh, and by the way... Um, desire is a combination of both, right? Desire equals towards plus away from. So if I desire a million dollars so I can buy a car and so I can give to people in, in poor countries, and then I also desire to get out of debt, and I also desire to stop getting made fun of, right? Those are both, both of those things are contributing towards the desire, and so what you want to do in your copywriting, a really good way that I've seen to conceptualize this is something called Heaven Island and Hell Island. So let me, real quick if I can, I'm going to stop sharing and get out my whiteboard. Okay. So you have... Here's heaven, or here's, here's hell island. And here is heaven island. And what you provide, your product is the bridge. So currently, the, per the place that the person is, is on hell island. 
And if they buy your product or if they do the thing that you want them to do, then that's going to put them over the bridge to Heaven Island. So what you want to do is you want to you want to emphasize both. You want to like ramp up the emotion of both. So you want people to to see how terrible it is over here, right? So there's and you want them to focus on the things that are that are bad over here and consider how they might even get worse in the future and how they're missing out if they're if they stay over here, right? Make it as painful as possible through your writing to like make them very painfully aware of everything that's bad about their current situation, right? Turn their current situation from, oh, it's okay. It's something that I'll, I'll live with, right? Because that's how a lot of people are. People are generally complacent. It's like, yeah, this kind of sucks, but I just live with it. Well, if you really, if you really nail down how terrible it is, then you'll that's when people say, okay, yeah, this really sucks. I got to do something about it. And then at the same time, you want to emphasize how amazing Heaven Island is, right? So Hell Island is all the away from emotions. You're building those away from emotions, the things that they want to escape. And then Heaven Island is building up all the towards emotions. So getting them to imagine how amazing it is when they pull up in their new Rolls Royce or whatever, and how all the girls are going to be attracted to him and, you know, whatever else, the, the more you can get somebody thinking about that, the more amazing Heaven Island looks and the more terrible Hell Island looks. The, and the, the combination of those are creating this desire for your thing, the bridge in the middle. So, okay. Let me go back to my document here. So that's what I mean when I, I mean desire equals towards plus away from. So let me go through a few uh, examples, and these are not the only examples, but toward emotions are basically if you do this, you will feel happiness, right? If you buy my thing, then you'll you'll feel happy. Could be excitement buy my thing and you'll feel excited and excited excitement is is kind of a future thing it's like i'm excited because i expect something good to happen in the future and then we have what else confidence right i feel confident in what i'm doing i feel good about myself feel pride proud of yourself that's a huge driver by the way like one of the biggest is pride people's feeling of self-worth security right that's another one i want to feel i want to feel safe i don't want to feel like one tiny little thing could could ruin my life and Feel free, and yeah, improve status. That goes that goes along with pride. And feel free to you know suggest other ones here. These are this is not an exhaustive list by any stretch of the imagination. Hope is another really really big one, right? And if you do a good job of explaining what your what your bridge is from Hell Island to to Heaven Island, and people think, whoa, that just might work for me. That might solve that problem that I've been struggling with for ten years. You're giving them hope. Hope is huge. Uh, freedom, right? The the freedom to do what you want and you're not restricted. That's a good feeling. Love is another really big one. You know, buy my thing and you will you will find the love of your life or the people of that you're attracted to will want to be with you or even like you'll you'll be a better parent you'll be a better a, a better spouse etc like you're going to have more love in your life if you do this thing so that's the towards emotions and again there's probably more than i'm missing here and then the other is away from so if you do this it will save you from basically Right. So if you if you do my thing, if you sign up for you buy my book, uh, then it will save you from these 
terrible things like pain, like sadness, like discouragement, um, fear. And notice, by the way, that, that, that some of these are, are kind of present and some of them are future, right? So pain is present. I'm hurting now. Sadness is present. Discouragement is kind of future. It's like nothing is going to work. That's, you know, nothing's working now and nothing is going to work in the future. Fear is future. Something bad is, is going to happen to me in the future. And if you can cover both of those at the same time, then, then you're extra powerful. And the same thing here, right, with the positive emotions, right? Happiness is present. I feel happy now. Excitement is the feeling of expectation of something good in the future. Same idea. Same thing with security, right? Security is nothing in the future is going to hurt me. Okay, what else we got? Uh, frustration. This is a big one. The person's been doing something, like been trying to do something and it's not worked. That's a big, a big um, motivator or a big, like a big, a powerful emotion that a lot of people have. Uh, loss of money. Yeah, that's, that's an excellent one. Or just say, just say loss in general. And in fact, most people, if not all people are more motivated by fear of loss and I guess loss really loss goes with fear. People are more motivated by fear of loss than they are by desire to gain something. And that's a, another principle that we'll probably get into later that you can frame something in two different ways. You can say, for example, if my offer can make you a million dollars, I can say, hey, buy my thing and you'll be a million dollars richer, right? I could also say, if you don't buy my thing, you will be a million dollars poorer than you could have been. I'm saying, you know, logically it's the same thing, but if I put it in the negative terms, like you'll be poorer than you could have been, it feels like a loss rather than promoting it as a gain. And for most people, the second one is more powerful and more compelling. Now, that's not all people, and, and it helps to know your audience a little bit because some people are more positively motivated, uh, but most people are more negatively motivated. So if you put it in those terms, then it'll work better. So let's see, I got some more here. Loneliness. Uh, restriction. Restriction is the opposite of freedom. It's the feeling that I can't do the things that I want to do. And humiliation, which is kind of the opposite of pride, right? And this, again, is a huge, huge motivator. So if you're, if you're tired of feeling like a loser, if you're sick of being humiliated, if you're sick of... There was a really famous ad for like a really old ad that showed uh, the, a skinny guy that was getting like sand kicked in his face by bullies. And, and it, like it showed, I'm trying to remember what it looked like. And, and like all the girls were, were like with the bullies. They like, they, they were these big, strong guys. And the, the skinny guy was there getting, getting laughed at and getting sand kicked in his face. And it was for a, like a, a muscle building program. So you could not be that skinny guy anymore. So it's, it's playing on that humiliation, right? Getting sand kicked in your face by guys that are, twice as big as you, that's very humiliating. So they're playing on that. So, cool. So that's, you know, that's a lot of different examples of, of emotions that you can use in your copywriting. And ideally you wanna tick off a bunch of these. If you can, and it depends on how much space you have and it depends on how much of them are actually true and actually believable. But the more of these both toward and away from emotions, you can put into the same piece of copy, the more powerful that piece of copy is going to be. Um, and another note too, is you want to bring attention to emotions that are already there, um, as opposed to trying to create emotions in people. Now, you, it is possible to create emotions in people, but it's a lot easier generally to 
amplify the emotions that they're already feeling. So for example, there's a there's a, a kind of type of ad that I see a lot, which starts with something that's something like financial experts predict that the economy is going to crash within the next six months. And so what they're doing is, is they're playing on fear, essentially. They're saying, hey, something terrible is about to happen unless you do whatever it is that we're telling you to do so that you can protect yourself. And so you might be able to convince somebody that this is in fact true, but it's much easier. And part of the reason that this is effective is because in most cases, it's an emotion that's already there. People are already afraid of a downturn in the economy. And probably most people, especially these days, already kind of have in the back of their mind something saying, well, the government has been printing a lot of money lately. Um, you know, the, the national debt is pretty high. There's all these like all these things that are going on in the economy that, that are, look scary. Um, and so it, they're not creating that emotion so much as bringing attention to something that's already there. And that's most of what you're doing here. It's, it's much easier to bring attention to something that's already there than to create it from scratch. But the fact that you're bringing attention to it is amplifying it. And if you can if you can talk about it in a way that brings more emotion into it, then you're increasing the desire. So with all that, I want to give you a example that we can go through. And so this is something that I just wrote today as an example for this lesson. And so this is kind of like a let maybe a piece of a sales letter for my YouTube ads course. And what I tried to do here is to hit all of these emotional points in the same sales letter. And so I, I did it in the form of a story. And stories work really, really well because they're not you're not going to offend anybody. So for this one specifically, I'm talking about myself. And so if I say that I was a broke loser and I was getting humiliated and, and I like did everything wrong, well, people are going to be able to identify with me. They're going to think, oh, I feel that way too, but I'm not pointing the finger at them. I'm not saying you're a broke loser. You're this, you're that, right? Because if you do that, you, you, you can risk offending people. Uh, whereas if I'm pointing the finger at myself, well, the person feels it but they're not, it's not like an accusation. So that's why I did this in a story format. And this story is not 100% true, <laughs> just because I wanted to be able to, to like check off all these emotions in the in a, a very short um, piece. So like, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is actually my true story, but um, yeah, so let's go through it and I'll show you what I'm doing at every point. So start with, it sucks being poor. I know because I was there. Living paycheck to paycheck, working a job I knew was going nowhere. So going nowhere, like I'm, I'm that is discouragement, right? Nothing is getting better in the future. I'm stuck in the same place. No matter how hard I worked, the best I could hope for is a stupid 3% merit increase that didn't even keep up with inflation. Anybody felt that before? Um, that's, and again, I'm, I'm playing up the discouragement. It's like, even if I do a really good job at my work, it's still not really going to pay off. That's a, it's a crappy feeling. And I'm, and I'm writing this in such a way that I think a lot of people are going to be able to identify with it, right? It's, if you have an office job, this is pretty standard that at the end of the year, if your performance is good, then they give you like a 3% raise. And then they tout that they hail that as the, that is if that's something great when actually it's not even keeping up pace with inflation. <laughs> so people understand this because a lot of people are in that situation. I was living in a crummy apartment that I was embarrassed to show people, especially girls, right? So here I'm playing on humiliation, embarrassment. And notice by the way, that the whole 
first half of this this write up is all away from emotions. I'm I'm really digging into the hell island part of this. And then, you know, especially girls. So I'm I'm getting into the love aspect of this too. I was single, of course. Women didn't find broke losers like me particularly attractive. So again, I'm this is the lack of love, the loneliness plus humiliation. Maybe the worst part is the total lack of freedom. I couldn't live where I wanted, couldn't travel where I wanted, couldn't take off unless my equally miserable boss approved it for me. I couldn't even buy the food I wanted at the grocery store. I had to buy the cheapest food they had and wait for when it was on sale. Right? So this whole thing, I'm playing on the feeling of being restricted, the lack of freedom. I was totally depressed. So, you know, sadness. And when you're depressed, it's hard to see a light at the end of the tunnel. Discouragement. All you see is, is things getting the same, if not worse. Right? So I, this is like things, I, I shouldn't have said getting the same, staying the same. So staying the same is discouragement, and then if not worse. So now we've switched from discouragement to fear which they easily could have, because being in that situation, if I had a health problem or my car broke down unexpectedly, I would be in a really bad way. I had no savings. I'd probably get kicked out of my apartment. I don't know what I would do then, right? So this whole part is all playing on the fear, like I, in the fear and insecurity. I'm in a situation where one small thing could make me like homeless, and then I knew I wanted to start a business, but everything I did failed. I spent hours and hours desperately posting on social media and sending cold messages to people, ping-ponging from one business opportunity to another. Nothing worked. I spent all my time and the little bit of extra money I did have trying to get something to catch on. I had a trail of half-hearted business failures a mile long. So this whole thing is all frustration. It's like, I've been putting in all this time and all this energy and nothing has worked. One of those failures was trying to start a marketing agency. Of course, my idea was to get people to pay me to run Facebook ads for them, just like everyone else in the world was trying to do. So this is building up the frustration a little bit, but mostly I'm setting up the turning point for how I, for the bridge that I found away from Hell Island onto Heaven Island. But then one day I was watching a video on YouTube and an ad came up and I thought, why is the whole world trying to do Facebook ads and hardly anybody is doing YouTube? So, and it dawned on me, I could use the same business model, but with YouTube ads. So right here, what I'm doing is I'm building the bridge. Right, I've, I've stumbled upon this bridge off of Hell Island onto Heaven Island and with the, the light bulb moment, exactly. And with that, the feeling of that is hope, right? I could use the same business model, but with YouTube ads, finally there's hope. I see a way, I see a way off of Heaven Island onto Hell Island. It was a better platform, plus I had basically zero competition. Finally, I was on to something. So now I'm, I'm kind of like amping up the hope into excitement. So I made the decision that I was going to learn everything I could about YouTube ads. Six months later, I had my first 10K month. I was over the moon, right? Happiness. I felt good about myself for the first time in a decade. Confidence. My clients were super happy with me because I was getting great results. Now a, a sort of pride and, and the feeling of being appreciated by others. I had a level of confidence I didn't know was possible. Confidence again. Girls started looking at me when I passed by on the street, which never happened before. Didn't take long until I fell in love with the girl of my dreams and proposed. Um, I, I should say. And she said, yes. <laughs> Forgot to include that detail. And exclamation point. So yeah, I'm, I'm introducing the love element in here. I bought one of those big Southern style houses on a big piece of land like I had always wanted. Happiness. And now we go on vacations whenever we want, take off time whenever we want, eat whatever we want, buy whatever we want. Freedom. 
And I don't even look at price tags anymore. I don't care what's on sale. It just doesn't matter. More freedom. I literally have a million dollars stored away in various investments that will be there for me in case something crazy happens. And I have passports to three different countries. This is security, which this is a big deal, by the way. Like this is a big motivator for people. You know, living paycheck to paycheck, you have very little financial security. But if you got a million dollars stored away in various investments, it's like the worst thing in the world could happen and you'll be okay. You'll be covered. Um, it reminds me, <laughs> it, for some reason, it makes me think of the, the show Narcos, where um, Pablo Escobar is kind of on his last legs and he he digs up this giant bag of cash that's buried in the ground. <laughs> And it's like, you know, that's that's like the extreme level of security where you have random drops of cash that are buried in the ground and you have houses all over the place that you can go to in case things go wrong. But anyway, the, the security is big and the passports for three different countries is the same thing, which if you didn't know, you can buy passports like you can buy a citizenship to small countries in the Caribbean, for example. And so even if something terrible happens in your country, and they won't let you out. Well, you can show the foreign passport, and you you're you have more freedom to travel, right? And so that was actually a big deal during COVID, because a lot of countries were limiting travel based on where you're from, and so people that had multiple passports could escape the country and like go somewhere else, whereas people that were stuck with just their own passport couldn't. Anyway, um. Funny to think how so many things change just because of one little tweak switching to YouTube ads, right? So just like a little period on the sentence with uh, with my bridge again. So um, thank you, Christian. I appreciate it. So again, that story is not 100% true. There's some of it is true. <laughs> but uh, I, I wanted to condense all of that into one story as, like, as fast as I could. So that was like, what, two and a half pages. Um, so that's it. So my, my recommendation for homework here is to write for your product or whatever it is that you're trying to sell, or even if you don't have a product, then just choose somebody else's product. You write it for my product if you want to, um, or just uh, anybody that, you know, you write it for an affiliate product. It really doesn't matter. I just want you to do this for practice. For some product, write one sentence that plays on each of these emotions to build desire, right? So maybe like, like, for example, let's say your product is weight loss pills. You could say, you know, imagine how, like, imagine the, the feeling of now being your, your ideal weight and running along the beach with your with your kids and now you can keep up with them and you have enough energy right maybe that's happiness and then like imagine the excitement standing on the scale for the first time and seeing that you've lost five pounds in just a week and knowing that that's just getting started you're going to be at your dream weight within three months or like and you know you go into the, the away from too just giving you a few examples here like the the pain of of seeing your best friend wearing the same dress as you but you you look bad and she looks great uh or the let's say the fear of your your doctor told you that if you don't lose 50 pounds within the next few months you're probably going to get diabetes. You're, you're like, you're already in like borderline pre-diabetes and you're going to have to I don't, breathe through a tube if you don't lose weight. Um, so just like, just write one sentence that relates to your product or a hypothetical product if you want for each of these. And if you're brave and you want to post it in the Facebook group, then I'll take a look at it for you. And, um, but otherwise that's it. So good to see you. And we will see you next week at the same time, 6.30 PM Eastern, dominate the marketplace.net slash rainmakers. Thanks Christian. And we'll see you next week.